Thanks, everyone, for coming out. It's New Year's weekend, 2021, and thanks to those who download these talks as podcasts from iTunes. We invite your comments, correspondence, and feedback. My email is at utahchristians at gmail.com. We also have a membership class at our website, utahchristians.org. I'd like to thank those that have become members. Couldn't do what we do without your help and support. Everything is inspired by the teachings of His Divine Grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is the founder of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Om Ma Ganati Miranda Siyan Gana Gana Salakya Chak Suri Niri Tam Yana Taj Mahi Sri Gita Vede Namha. Sri Chaitanya Manobhi Stam Stapi Tam Yana Bhutare. So I am Rupa Akadam Ayam. Dira Tiswa Parandi Kam. Start the new year off with a joke. As you know, the Louvre is the most famous museum in all of Europe. So they once ran a contest in a newspaper providing a grand prize to a person who gave the best answer to this question. If a fire broke out in the Louvre and you could save only one painting, which one would it be? Christian Bernard, a French novelist, won the prize with his reply, I would save the one nearest the exit. <laughs> Our topic today is the new you in 2021. Each and every one of us has a deep down desire to improve. Not that we all act on it. Some of us seize it. Some of us ignore it. But you can't make it go away. It's there in every living being, especially in the human form of life. The reason that you can't get rid of it is because it's a desire that God put in our hearts. He created us not to get stuck, not to stagnate, not to sour, but to be constantly moving ahead, rising to new levels, taking new ground. And throughout our lives, Krishna or God reveals to us newer and newer areas in which we need to improve. He speaks to us from within our heart, from scripture, from the voices of those who love us. He knows, because he's dwelling in our heart, right alongside of us, the living beings, He's intimately aware of the things that are holding us back. He knows our weaknesses, our faults. He knows our inner secrets. And when he brings these matters to our attention, we have to be willing to take the corrective measures. And if we're not willing to get out of our comfort zone, we're just going to remain stuck in a rut in our marriages, in our finances, in our careers, or in our walk with God. If you casually disregard the advice of scripture, ignore the small voice from deep within your heart or downplay the advice from friends or well-wishers, you're just not going to become everything that you were created to be. Sometimes we think, I know I should forgive that person, but they just hurt me so badly. I know I need to get into shape, but eh, I just don't seem to have the time. I know I need to quit working so much, but gosh, I just need the extra money. I know I should have got out of bed earlier, but I just love late night TV. I know I should go to the temple, but I'm so tired on the weekends. It's so important to heed Krishna's promptings for improvement. Everything that God tells us is for our own good. It may be difficult in the beginning, but in the end, it gets us closer to his divine Presence. The Bhagavad Gita says, That which seems like poison in the beginning, but which is nectar in the end, is happiness in the mode of goodness. On the other hand, that which seems like nectar in the beginning, but leaves us poisoned and full of regrets, that is happiness in the mode of passion. There's only one reason why Krishna wants your obedience, and that is so that he can then release more of his favor to you. Our question is, are there things in your life that you know you should be dealing with, but instead you're putting them off? Maybe you're ignoring his hints about getting your finances in order, about arguing less with your wife, making peace with that coworker, Maybe you need to cut down on the sweets, lose some weight. Maybe during the morning commute, 
you need to listen to Krishna radio instead of Rush Limbaugh. Maybe this message, maybe your being here this afternoon is another reminder not to put it off any longer, to pay attention to what Krishna is saying to you. Anytime you obey the Lord, a blessing will follow. You're sowing a seed which will grow and get higher and higher. Like with any seed, it's not going to happen overnight. But at some point, in some way, you're going to see Krishna or God's goodness in your life in a greater way. Let me ask you a question this evening. How high do you want to rise? Do you want to continue to increase? Do you want to see more of God's blessings? And if so, the higher you go, the more disciplined you're going to have to be. The higher you go, the more willing you're going to have to be to follow what Krishna is saying. Krishna is asking you maybe not to spend time anymore with those friends who are taking intoxicants, who are cheating on their spouses, cutting corners on dishonesty. You may want to put it off, but Churu, I've known them since high school. If I didn't have those friends, I'd be lonely. And anyway, true, they're not that bad. Their bad conduct doesn't affect me, doesn't hurt me one bit. Can I tell you, you're playing with fire. I heard about a fellow who loaned his car to a friend. The friend used it for a day and returned it, no big deal, right? Well, he got stopped a few days later on a routine traffic violation. The police, for some reason, searched his car and they found drugs that his friend had left behind. He had to go to jail because his friend had used his car to deliver some drugs and left some behind. Probably left him behind because he was too spaced out to remember. Now, here's a point. When Lord Krishna asks you to do something, Mohan, the sooner you do it, the better off you'll be. We should develop the habit of reflexively, immediately following the instructions of the Lord. We put it off, delay, procrastinate at our own risk. We question the wisdom of the Lord, second guess him, minimizing his loving advice at our own risk. You may not want to distance yourself from those friends because you're afraid you'll be lonely. However, the sooner you follow the advice of the Lord and start seeing less and less of them, the sooner the Lord's going to send you better friends. The sooner you cut down on that bad habit, the sooner the Lord will enthuse you about an exercise program. The sooner you cut out sweets, the sooner you start looking good in the mirror. The sooner you bite your tongue and allow your spouse the last word, the sooner you're going to have peace in the family. The sooner you start daily chanting the holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, the sooner you're going to experience the fullness of God's favor in your life. The longer we delay in a character issue, the more difficult it is later on. You're always a lot better off obeying Krishna's promptings quickly. The moment you feel the attention, the uh, tension, the e uneasiness, the moment that an alarm sounds, you need to move right away and take the proper steps. Childlike, we need to get into the habit of trusting Him to lead us in the best direction for our life. Now imagine, if you will, someone high up in a balcony, looking down. They see you as a pedestrian coming down the middle of the street, and simultaneously, they see a car speeding towards you from around a corner. They shout to you, hey, jump to the sidewalk. To save yourself from a great calamity, you need to follow their instructions right away. You can't doubt, hesitate, loiter where you are. Although you personally cannot see the car rushing towards you, cannot with your physical senses perceive the danger, you need to yield to the person who has a better vantage point. Krishna says to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedaham samadhi tani vartamani charjana bhavisha nicha budi mam tu vedana kastana. He says, I know everything, past, 
present, future. I know what's around the corner. I know what's around on the other side of the block. I know what's across town. I'm in the hearts of all living beings. I know what your enemy's going to do before they even know it themselves. Krishna is your well-wisher. Krishna is the all-powerful, all-knowing. Lord, it's got your back. The sooner you learn to obey and trust him, the sooner you're going to be saved from all kinds of dangers. In a purport, 3rd Canto, 13th chapter, 49th verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Prabhupada says, a devotee who constantly engages in the service of the Lord is awarded all knowledge necessary to achieve the Supreme. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I heard about a ranger at Yellowstone Park who was leading a tour of young hikers. He was intent on telling the hikers about the local flowers and animals. And he was annoyed by the static of his two-way radio. So he switched it off. Not long afterwards, a messenger ran breathlessly up to the group and asked why he hadn't responded to the emergency calls on his radio. The ranger said, what difference does it make? What big deal is it? They said, a grizzly bear has been stalking your group for the last hour and a half, and the authorities were trying to warn you of the danger. Similarly, anytime we tune out the messages that Krishna is sending us, not only do we put ourselves at risk, but we also put those around us at risk as well. Have you heard people say, practically with tears in their eyes, I knew I should have kept strife out of my family. I knew I should have spent more time with the kids. I knew I shouldn't have been so hard to get along with. I knew I should have started chanting years and years ago. Isn't it amazing how we can know the right thing to do and yet still not do it? Well, don't let that be you. Be obedient now so that you won't have regrets later on. Krishna may be cautioning you about your words, asking you to say not so many hurtful, sarcastic, and critical things. Maybe you've developed a bad habit, and you know down inside it's hurting your relationships, it's hurting your job, it's hurting your finances as well. Don't wait for the sirens to go off before you do something. Now, in most cases, Krishna is not going to hit you right between the eyes with a two-by-four and shout raucously, Hey, you're ruining your marriage. You're going to end up hurt and lonely. His advice is more likely to come to you, more like a whisper from a place of peace and stillness. Krishna has equipped you to handle difficult things. It's already planted the seeds, discipline, self-control inside you. You just have to water those seeds with his holy names and then watch them grow. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I heard a story about a fellow named Daniel Simpsons. He was desperately short on cash. He took a pistol that had been handed down to him in his family from several generations. With that pistol, he went out and robbed a bank of $6,000. Later on, he was arrested. Now, at his trial, two significant things happened. First, Danny was sentenced to six years in prison. The second thing, it was discovered that the gun he used was an antique Colt made by the Ross Rifle Company in 1918. Its value was about $100,000. <laughs> Did you catch that? <laughs> he robbed a bank for $6,000 all the time, holding a gun in his hand worth $100,000. <laughs> Do you think Danny had some regrets? You bet he did. If he had to do it all over again, my guess is that he would have taken a closer look at his inheritance before running off and robbing a bank. 
Similarly, don't miss the treasures that are right at hand. We need to work with our own talents, our own skills, our own abilities, learn to dig up the many hidden things that Krishna has buried within each and every one of us. Krishna has already packed our bags with everything we need. He didn't forget anything. He didn't leave anything out. Do you know people who, instead of paying the price to go to the next level, instead of looking into their own suitcase, so to speak, they spend all their time and energy being jealous of other people who are more successful, more fulfilled, more prosperous than them, rather than being happy for those people and rejoicing, they simply spend all of their time comparing themselves and trying to find fault. Now, interestingly thing about this is that that person could have enjoyed the same success and fulfillment, but they were unwilling to pay the price unwilling to make the same sort of sacrifices that had been made by the people of whom they were envious. Now, if we're going to be the men and women that we were created to be, we need to stay open, respectful, be inspired and challenged by those who are further along for us. The poet said, the lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps in others sailing over life's solemn main, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother seeing shall take heart again. Let us then be up and doing with a heart for any fate, still perceiving, still achieving, achieving with learn to labor and to wait. And this New Year's weekend, 2021, always look for ways to improve. There are treasures hidden underneath complacency underneath immobility, underneath laziness, underneath jealousy. You can get away with a lot, especially in this day and age. You can treat people disrespectfully, be sloppy in your business affairs, and still live comfortably. You might even get to be the president of the United States. But we're not talking about that. We're not talking about getting along. We're talking about rising higher, being the best that you can be. Prabhupada says in a purport in the Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, first chapter, fourth verse, we got this rare and valuable human form of life. We should utilize it to the highest level of self-perfection. That is Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. One of the most fascinating people in the United States history was a black gentleman from the South named George Washington Carver. He was born as the son of slaves, born himself into the system of slavery. Now, he could have settled where he was, wallowed in self-pity, come up with any number of excuses for not rising higher. However, he never allowed his thoughts or actions to be enslaved. Early in his life, he had a deep belief that God had something special in store for him. Eventually, he became a chemist who specialized in agricultural products. His work helped the South move from dependence on one single crop of cotton to include diversified products <clears throat> like sweet potatoes and peanuts. He called his laboratory God's little workshop, and he often carried on conversations with the Almighty. The story goes that one day George was working in God's little workshop and he said, Lord, tell me the purpose of the universe. God said, that's too big a question for your little mind. Reduce the scope of the question. Carver then said, all right, God, tell me the purpose of mankind. God said, no, no, no. Reduce the scope of your question. Finally, Mr. Carver said, okay, God, tell me about the peanut." God said, right on, now we're talking. <laughs> George Washington Carver gave his talent to discovering the uses of the peanut. Before he died, he discovered over 100 different products and uses for it. His discoveries helped to reshape and re-energize the weakened economy of the South, helped millions of people. Everyone benefited from his God-centered attitude about life and his willingness to allow God to mold his mind and thoughts 
from a spiritual perspective. One of the most important lessons that you can ever learn in life is follow peace. Follow peace. Listen to your conscience. Deal with the issues that Krishna brings to light. Don't put it off. The longer you put it off, the more difficult it's going to be. When people wonder why they're not happy, why they're not blessed, why they can't sleep at night, often it's because their conscience is not clear. You cannot push down your higher self and expect to enjoy God's best. When we refuse to accept the higher calling in our lives, we step out of his protection and favor. When we live with a guilty conscience, we don't feel good about ourselves. Sometimes we take it out on other people. We live defeated, weak, mediocre lives. That's because of the poison that we've allowed to get on the inside. If you choose this New Year's weekend of 2021 to make the necessary changes, Krishna will help you. Tesham evanu kampartam aham agyanam dam nisyami atmibhavishto jnana deepenu bhashvata. Krishna says, I from within the heart destroy the darkness of ignorance with the shining torchlight of knowledge. Uh, we have to do our part. We have to ask Krishna to put us on the best path for our lives. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Govinda, son of Nanda, though you're the one second and none, my shining son, I'm heartbroken in the ocean of birth and death. It's not worth the commotion. Pull me out of this cruel blender, surrendered as an atom in the sweet splendor of your tender lotus feet. Krishna guides each and every one of us in an individual way. Why? Because we're at different levels. Birds fly high and low in the sky according to their capacities. We should not waste time comparing ourselves to others. Too often when we, let's not have all these conferences going on. Hindu? Hindu? Hindu. It's just a half an hour. Just, we just have to sit for half an hour, but that's all. Something's burning or something. Right? Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> Too often what happens is when we compare ourselves to others, we tend to make excuses. We tend to say, well, my friends are all going to the movie. What's the harm? everybody's going. I don't want to be left alone. At the same time, there's a little alarm going off inside you. There's a little voice saying, you're better than that. Don't take poison willingly into your mind. You have to do what you feel good about in your own heart. Maybe your friends just aren't at your level. Maybe they're not listening to God's advice. If you distance yourself from them, sure, you may friend, spend a few lonely nights, but remember, anything Krishna asks you to do is for your benefit. It's so that he can ultimately release more favor into your life. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Ram, Ram, Hare Hare. In a lecture, Prabhupada talks about the steps on the path of self-improvement. By yogic powers, one can control others. One can also travel in an astral, subtle form anywhere within the universe. One can obtain any item from anywhere in the universe. One can choose one's own time and place of death and rebirth wherever one may desire. All these powers are available through the mystic yogi cities. But, Prabhupada says, when one rises to the level of receiving dictation from the Lord, that is the highest perfectional stage of life. Krishna affirms in the 10th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Tesham satati yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam ubiyantite. Those who engage undeviatingly in devotional service to me, to them I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Anytime Krishna dictates something to us, he also gives us the grace to accomplish it. Prabhupada's guru, whose disappearance day we observed yesterday, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, asked Prabhupada in 1926 
to go to the Western countries and spread Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada was unable to actually go because at that time he had a business, he had a family. He wasn't able to go to the West actually until 1965, 40 years later. He no longer had youth, good health, wealth, good connections. By what power did Prabhupada achieve success in his mission? There are 820 Hare Krishna temples globally now. He achieved his success by grace, by divine grace. He persevered against all odds. By divine grace, he attracted 4,500 young disciples, myself among them. By divine grace, while he was with us, he established 108 temples. By divine grace, he translated and printed 50 big books. By divine grace, he circled the earth 13 times. That's why we call him his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We're all gathered here this evening by the divine grace of Krishna. And if we're honest, if we're honest, we'll admit that Krishna has abundantly blessed us even though we've pushed him far down from first place in our lives, isn't it? We haven't particularly cared for his instructions to date. And nevertheless, he has still shown us goodness in a thousand different ways. Wouldn't it then make the most perfect sense to try to improve in this new year? To try to dial him in better? Would it not make perfect sense to hunger to hear his voice below the chatter? To thirst for his voice as a dying man in the desert thirsts for water, would it not make perfect sense to call out day and night for his grace fully in our lives? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, God's guidance is always there, never takes a coffee break, never has a lapse of attention, never stops wanting to bless us, but we have to do our part and take the first step. We have to be willing to declare, yes, this is for me. I want supernatural strength. Yes, I want to overcome all obstacles. Yes, I want to defeat all enemies. Yes, I want to rise higher and higher. Yes, I want to take my obedience to the next level. I want myself Let's just not do this. Can we just sit for 30 minutes? 30 minutes, it's all we ask. 30 short minutes, please. I want myself and my loved ones to experience an unprecedented degree of favor. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Friends, Krishna has great things in store for you. Don't get stuck in a rut. Settle for mediocrity. Pay attention to the small, still voice on the inside. Deal with the issues that Krishna brings to light. Learn to obey quickly. How high we go in life is directly related to how fully you follow God's instructions. He's preparing you for great things. He's going to take you further than you thought possible. Don't be surprised when he asks you to pick up your bags He's already packed them with everything you need. He's going to take you to places that you could never go on your own in this life. And in the next life, he's prepared to promote you back to home, back to Godhead. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Now you can get up, you can talk, you can have conferences, you can come and go all you want. Thank you. <laughs> Indu is going to lead us uh, some more chanting, and then we'll go downstairs and have some prasadam.
Shri Prabhupada Kijai, Ananda Gurudev 